Hi, I'm Matt Landers, Head of Developer Relations at WP Engine, and this is the Decode channel where we talk about everything related to front-end development uh, with Headless WordPress. So let's dive in and talk about the REST API. So whenever you build a headless site, you need some way to get the content out of your CMS, like WordPress. Uh, and one of the ways to do that is the REST API. So WordPress comes with the REST API built into core. Uh, now, personally, if I'm gonna build a site, typically I will use GraphQL because I just think it's a better API interface for connecting different objects, like a post to an author, uh, that kind of stuff. But the REST API is built in and it is a common uh, API that will be used in a headless site. So in this video, we're gonna just do a quick introduction into the API, build a small Net.js app that will pull down a list of posts. When you click a post, it'll show us the contents of that post. I've done this with GraphQL as well, so you can check out that video too. All right, so let's look and dive in. So I'm on the REST API handbook, which is on wordpress.org. Uh, this is where you can find everything, like all the different endpoints for the REST API, like the posts, pages, and everything else. So we're gonna use the endpoint for posts. Now, one way that you can test an endpoint is through a tool that I like called Postman, which we will use that to make sure everything's up and running before we go ahead and build our site. All right, so I have a site, I used local, uh, which is this tool here. If you need to create a local instance of WordPress, this is great, it happens in a jiffy. Uh, I used that to create this site and it's on rest.local on my computer. Uh, added a couple posts here, and now we're gonna hit these posts uh, through the REST API and pull them down. But let's make sure it's all working. So we'll go to Postman, create a new request, and we're going to go to HTTP rest.local slash wp-json. So that's one of where all the API reference lives is under that root URL. And then it's slash wp slash v2 slash posts. So after the v2 is where we can say what resource we want. In this case, we want posts. And since it's just a get request, we don't have to do anything else. We don't have to set any headers or anything. We're just calling in. And we'll see that this sends back a JavaScript array uh, of all of the different posts. And it has everything on it, like the title, the, the full link. It has uh, the status, whether it's published or not. Uh, if it's not published, it won't come back from an unauthenticated request. We're not gonna get into authentication in this particular video, but we will cover that later. Uh, and we also have a framework, our headless framework, uh, our GitHub at WP Engine uh, organization, github.com slash WP Engine, where we actually made this super simple to authenticate with the APIs. All right, so we see that we have an array of these two posts, and then we can also uh, add more to this URL, like slash one, which will pull back the ID one. Uh, there is no slash two, so if I push two, I get an error, it just says status 400, 404. This is important, we're gonna use this later. So if we try to hit a post that doesn't exist, we wanna show a 404, that's important. Uh, but the other one is five. I don't know why it goes one to five, but somebody out there knows. Um, so we're going to now use these URLs on our front end to build a site. So let's go do it. All right, so we just say npx, create next app. We're gonna use next.js, so I'm just gonna use their little command line utility to create the um, node app and React. <clears throat> I always use TypeScript, so after this installs all of the modules, I'm also going to install TypeScript and the types for Node and for React. It's also gonna create some boilerplate pages that are already there for us that we don't want, so I'll remove those as well. And we'll just start from scratch. That way you can see, hey, if I was gonna do this and I don't have anything going, these are the exact steps that you would do to do it. So I'm gonna go into the REST folder and I'll uh, install these types. All right, and we'll just delete all the pages. If you haven't used Next, it's pretty cool. You don't need a router or anything like you do with other, uh, if you just used React out of the box. Uh, they have a convention for, re for the router, which is that you just put a React component into the pages folder and that will become a route. That's pretty sweet. All right, 
so now we've done everything that we need to here. Let's go ahead and run this. Actually, we're not going to run it yet. We need to go make some changes. So let's go over to Visual Studio. In our pages, we need to create a new file. So we'll create index.tsx. So it's kind of like your index.html on an old school website. Uh, it'll actually be just a root. So if you create a folder, it'll you can put in each folder too. All right, so we're just going to call it home. Create a little React component. And we'll put something on here real quick. And we just need to export it. All right, now let's go start this up and make sure that it's running before we get too far into this. All right, it's on local host and it should come back and show us that once it's up. All right, cool. So we have a site, it's up and running. Now we need to just populate it with some data. So let's use the REST API to do that. All right, so on a site that is a blog, you're going to care about SEO and you're going to want to return 404s when pages aren't found and stuff like that. So we're going to do server side rendering and Nets makes this super easy. All we have to do is export a function called get server side props. It has to be this name. And it also comes with an object. The only thing that we want out of there are the params. So we want to, oh, actually, we don't even need this on the home page. So we'll do that when we get to the detail page. All right, and in here, we're going to actually call the REST API. So this will only happen on the server. It'll populate our component with its properties on the server. And then it'll be able to send back the already rendered HTML to the browser. That way, if a search engine is hitting it, all the data will be there so that they can index it. All right, uh, let's do it. So we just need to fetch that data. So we're going to do um, result. We're going to await a fetch request. And we just need to use that URL that we had in Postman. So let's grab it. We're only going to grab the post part because we're on the home page. And this is going to be the list of posts. All right, once we get it, we need to um, Turn it into JSON, so or we need to turn it into JavaScript, a JavaScript object from JSON. All right, so now we have that, and all we have to do is return props, and I'm actually going to call this posts instead of data. So we'll return it into our props which will get passed in up here in our component. So I'm just gonna put posts here. But that's what we're getting from here. And then we wanna show a list. So we'll just do UO uh, and then post.map. And we will have an LI for this. We also wanna have a link here uh, so that when we click it, on the title, it will take us to our page. So this is a next link and it's cool. It'll do prefetching for you and all kind of neat stuff. So I'm gonna import that. All right. And it needs an href. And it's gonna go to the ID. Now, we wouldn't want the ID to be what our actual URL is, but just for simplicity's sake of this demo, we're going to make the post ID be um, where we navigate to if we click it, and then we'll take care of showing that after we click on that. And it's going to be in post.title.rendered. All right, so we save this. We go back over to our browser refresh and there's our post so that's simply we were able to pull data from the api and display it on our um, on our page and if we click on these <clears throat> we'll get a 404 because we haven't set up a page for that route uh, so we have localhost slash five because we clicked on the second one uh, and click on hello world one which is the first post now we have slash one all right so it's trying to load this page but there's we haven't put this route into our router yet. Now we don't wanna have a different route for every 
post. So we can use a dynamic route in uh, next. And we'll just call that the, we'll put ID. All right, and I'm gonna copy this page over just for, make this a little faster. We'll call this one post instead of home. This is gonna show the details of the post. And we'll put this in an article. I think it's good, semantic HTML. And this isn't gonna return post this time, it's just gonna return one single post. So we'll do post.title.rendered. And we don't need to loop this time. We just want to show the content. So what we're going to do is have a div. And we need to dangerously set HTML in here. If you don't know React, it's not that dangerous. All it does is say we're going to get HTML back from the API. And we want to inject that HTML into a, into a element. And we're going to inject it into the div element. We can't just show it like this because then we'll actually see the HTML. And that's not what we want our users to see. All right, post.content.rendered. Great, so now we wanna go get the right post though. So when we get in here, we're gonna do uh, params.id at the end of our URL, and we need to pull those params in. So get server site props passes in a context. On that context, there's a params object that has the parameters for the URL that were passed in. <clears throat> so we'll grab the ID. The reason it's named ID is because of the name that we named our page, which is bracket ID bracket. And that's how it determines what this will be. All right, so it goes out, it gets that post, and then it uh, sets it onto our props, and then our page should render. Let's see what happens. And there it is, hello world. So if we go back and we just click, you can see that's awesome, it's working, super cool. So now this is working, but what if we go in here and we just type in a random ID? We get an error here because it says that, hey, this post doesn't exist. What we wanna do is figure out if this was found or not. So if that post is not found, if there's a 404, we want to tell Nets like, hey, that we don't know about this particular parameter. So what we'll do is we can also return a not found property uh, from get server props. And what we'll do is just say post.data.status. And we'll say if it's 404, then set not found to true. So that way when we come back over here, we refresh, it'll show a 404 page. But if we go to any other route that is valid, it will show the right page. And now if we just type in something random, oh, it doesn't work. So that's awesome. So that quickly, we've already built a site that pulls down posts, uh, shows a list, lets you click it, go into that post, and then show the post on the page. So that's your like basic, very simple headless site uh, using the REST API. Now we also have another video of how to do this with the GraphQL API, which I would recommend you checking out. Uh, then you don't need to know all those different URLs. There's only one URL. And you can pull back only the data that you want. You technically can do that with the REST API. You can pass in a fields parameter uh, in the query string, but it's not quite as nice and intuitive as it is with GraphQL. So check out the GraphQL plugin. Uh, leave any comments on this if you want more details on how to use the API or anything headless. Love to hear from you and check out our site at developers.wpengine.com. That is where we have all of our videos and our blogs and everything related to Headless. And you can join the community and become the best Headless developer that you can be with us. I hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you in the next video. See ya.